Hello and uh, welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi and today we are going to talk about the new and, in my opinion, greatly improved Mastery Pass shortly available for Bloomboro. Um, within the video you will see some older footage used. Uh, that is for two reasons. One, it allows me to uh, conserve resources. Uh, secondly, the Bloomboro Mastery Pass, we can't actually see it at the time of the recording. And, um, well, as a third caveat, it really doesn't make that much difference because while the relative position of individual assets within the Mastery Pass will sometimes change, and on occasion, even what's included with the Mastery Pass, the valuation underlying those individual assets really doesn't change all that much from season to season. So what do you say without further ado, we talk about what comes in the Mastery Pass, how to value that, what's new, what's old, and all those good things. This season, I'm hanging out with the friends here in Bloomboro, and well, I don't really look any different. Uh, apparently, I'm always in beast mode. And if you want your Magic the Gathering experience on and off Arena to be in beast mode too, make sure to check out my Patreon page, because let's be honest, not everything makes it to YouTube. Now, uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, so right. I want to start uh, this season's Mastery Pass conversation by talking about uh, some recent changes that are at least adjacent to the Mastery Pass. Uh, the first and foremost being Psychic Frog's Horizon Hideaway that was introduced with the release of Modern Horizons 3. Uh, this is basically a Mastery Pass-like product uh, that is intended for non-rotating releases. So something like Modern Horizons 3 that released directly into Eternal Formats, never affected Standard or Alchemy, uh, luckily for us. Uh, and I say luckily because I would stop short of saying that this was universally disliked, but I definitely saw more negative response than even close to being positive. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here going into the details of it. Uh, I actually have an entire video going over the nitty gritty of it. That'll be linked in the description for those that are interested. Uh, but the long and the short of it was the arena team started giving us an additional free currency in the form of tickets for doing things we generally do anyway, like completing quests and getting daily wins. I believe that the main issue that most people had is the Mastery Pass has become thought of pretty universally as the best value available on Arena, whether that is uh, spending on a budget or playing free-to-play. Uh, and when you break down the value for Horizon Hideaway in particular, it just came up short. And even if you are more generous with the valuations than I tend to be, which to be honest is not always hard, uh, it was still nowhere near the comparative value that you get out of the Mastery Pass. Fast forward just a couple of months here and we find that the Hideaway has actually influenced the future Mastery Passes, but in what I believe is a much more positive way. Introducing the Mastery Emporium, which is functionally going to replace the old Mastery Tree system, and as I implied earlier, in a much more positive way, I think this is actually going to eclipse the exiting system. Uh, the long and the short of it here is you no longer have to purchase a limited selection of items and then unlock additional items as you move through the mastery tree. Instead, you can start spending your orbs any way you want right from day one which is going to prove to be a much more flexible option for the free-to-play players that are not going to get, in some cases, more than five orbs. Orb redemptions are pretty cut and dry. Your sleeve-style cosmetics are looking to run you two orbs, while your card-style cosmetics will continue to cost only one orb per redemption. Uh, this looks like a more expensive thing, but rest assured they actually have increased the number of orbs being granted uh, 
across the mastery pass redemption so that you can still get everything uh, you can just do it in the order now that you choose uh, the sleeves costing two since they increase the total number of orbs is really just a tax for those previously mentioned free-to-play players that may not be purchasing the mastery pass each and every season um, overall, they might get less if they choose to redeem for sleeves, but overall, the more available choices and flexibility is still a good thing, in my opinion. This time around, the Emporium will also offer four copies of the Planeswalker Soren Markov card for a grand total price of just two orbs. I don't expect this is the sort of offer we can always expect from the Emporium moving forward. Uh, much more likely, Soren Markov has been selected as one of the Bloom Burrowed Planeswalkers in the list special selection that it's going to be distributed for the first time on Arena. Uh, this is their way of helping players get copies of those cards uh, if they so choose. So there we go, guys. There's my take on this. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think about these recent trends. And then let's move forward and talk about the Mastery Pass from a broader value perspective. All right, so for folks that maybe aren't familiar with the Mastery Pass system, uh, let's talk about some of the fundamentals here. And uh, well, the first thing I, I have to say about this is I, I love the artistic coloration choices that they made with Wilds of Eldraine. And it shows up so well with these uh, bright yet deep purples and uh, the fairy companions or pets or however you want to call that. Uh, kudos. Uh, that having been said, let's, let's talk about some of the more hardline aspects. As you can see here, there are in fact two pathways here. The one on the top is freely accessible and automatically done so for everyone who plays Arena during the course of each season. Of course, this one we're talking about the Wilds of Eldraine season. Uh, the bottom path is uh, often referred to as the Mastery Pass itself, and that is a buy purchase option. It can only be purchased with gems and the initial cost on that is 3,400 gems. Uh, the actual cost on that can be a little bit more nuanced, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, on the free path side of things or that top path, uh, you'll hear me refer to it that way as the mastery path because we all walk that path together regardless of our economic status within the game. Um, Wizards officially designates it as the set mastery. And typically what you get is about every other level you win a free pack. You'll see that here on uh, level two, uh, again on level four, six, eight, ten. And these will continue all the way up through level 70 this time but the free path stops giving rewards this time around level 60, uh, giving you a total of 30 free packs along the way. Uh, there are a couple of other things going on here. Uh, you will see the occasional mastery orb, which is a redeemable for cosmetics. And in the free mastery path, that is typically done with five mastery orbs about once every 10 levels, starting at level five and uh, then going all the way up to level 45. For the initial set each year, there are some additional nuances here. If you see uh, level seven and level nine here, and then you'll see some others later on, uh, you'll notice there's kind of a green glow to those levels in the top path. And that means you are receiving an additional reward as part of your renewal system. Uh, if you don't see those, it's because you are qualified for renewal yet. Don't worry about it. They tend to do this every year. If you didn't get it this year, you will most likely get it next year. Uh, level three would have a similar uh, such pass uh, green to it 
if uh, I hadn't already redeemed it. Uh, those are just additional rewards like wild cards, or I should not say wild cards, I should say ICRs, uh, uncommons at level 3, uh, a mythic at level 9, etc, etc, etc. Again, if you don't see those, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing to report. Uh, you most likely just have it joined recently enough that you did not qualify for renewal. Uh, essentially, the cutoff on that was the release of Wilds of Train. So if you have started playing Arena after the release of Wild of Oil Drain, you probably will not see that. Now, in shifting focus to the lower path, of course, you start off with a cosmetics bundle right off the bat. Uh, there are packs, including packs that are not Wilds of El Drain. Uh, you will also see cosmetics and an additional 25 cosmetic orbs. Uh, those are two separate rewards here. Uh, you will receive one specific cosmetic and then an orb that you can redeem for one of several choices. More on the specifics of that later. Uh, you will also see additional ICRs, all of which are mythic on the paid mastery pass. Uh, you will also see option, well, I shouldn't say options, uh, opportunities to receive uh, gems, play sets of rares that are not typically available as part of the base set. These will come from the commander set and uh, things like that. And uh, at level 15, you will typically receive a draft token. This is not redeemable for a quick draft specifically, but one of the premium and traditional drafts, um, you get your choice of either of those. And as you can see, there are more packs here, which are not Wild Spell Drain. And beyond that, you will also have uh, the opportunities to receive gold refunds, so to speak, and special cosmetics like uh, additional companions or pets. And uh, that is what makes up the pathway here. And that paid pathway continues to receive rewards every single level through level 70 and beyond. Uh, every thousand XP that you receive beyond level 70 will redeem an additional uncommon individual card reward or ICR. Uh, now, in contributing to the value on that, you would have to figure out what all of these individual levels would mean to you. And there's a lot of different answers on that, and we will go into the specifics here shortly. Uh, the one fundamental thing that I would propose here is that the Mastery Pass itself, purchasing that for the initial cost of 3,400 gems, is the best thing that you can be doing with your gems. And while these are your gems and not my gems, and you're welcome to use them any way that you want, uh, using gems for any other purposes before having purchased the Mastery Pass each season is potentially economically unsound. Uh, that is because of the return on investment that is offered by the Mastery Pass and how high that is in the spectrum of all of the choices that you could be making on Arena. And we will go into more specifics on that in a few minutes. Uh, for now, let's talk about some of the ways that you can value these various levels and rewards along the path. Now, as we move into valuation of the different components of the Mastery Pass that we just talked about, I do want to take just a moment and acknowledge the fact that people play this game differently. I don't expect you to be a mirror image of me or my play style or the economics that are factored by those play styles. Uh, if you have your own perspective on how to value these things and it makes sense to you, by all means, use that. My goal here is not to get you to think exactly the way I do or convince you that I'm right, but to get you to think about the economics of the game from your own unique perspective. 
Now, when it comes to cosmetics, I am not shy at all about saying that, well, I don't see a lot of value in cosmetics. Uh, as far as I know, I have never won a game because of cosmetics. I don't spend resources on cosmetics. I don't recommend that you spend resources on cosmetics. But if you feel differently, you might find a wide range of valuations on various cosmetics. I, however, do not spend any resources on cosmetics, and as such, I do not put any value to them when evaluating the Mastery Pass. After cosmetics, by far the most numerous thing you're going to find in the Mastery Pass are packs from various sets. And really how you value these is going to have a big determination because of the frequency on uh, what you see as the total Mastery Pass value. And uh, really, you could make an argument for some people that are strictly free to play that packs really don't have any value because they don't actually buy them. Um, personally, I dismiss that. I, I think that's a little uh, too far one side there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I do think there is some validity for people that bulk out their collection through Quick Draft. And there you get a per pack value of about 150 gems. Uh, of course, the store sells packs uh, for 200 gems pretty much every set, every day of the week. And occasionally we see discounted packs anywhere from 170 to 180 gems. Uh, so depending upon where you are in this spectrum uh, is gonna have a big influence on your total mastery pass value. Now for myself and what I recommend through the plan, the number of packs purchased, etc., cetera, uh, I am currently using about 180 gems as my pack value. And once you've established a value for packs, whatever the case may be, uh, you probably want to use that same valuation for the levels that offer you 1,000 gold, because 1,000 gold to a pack is a pretty good analog and is probably going to continue to reflect the way you play the game and engage with the economy. Now, the lowest frequency piece within the Mastery Pass Awards is probably the one that is most heatedly disputed among uh, various play styles. Uh, and that, of course, is the draft token. For a limited number of people that just don't like to draft, I could see their argument that this really doesn't have any value whatsoever. Uh, for those that primarily engage with limited through quick draft, I could see this having a replacement value of 750 gems because basically you would just be doing a premium draft in place of a quick draft. Therefore, 750 gems fits pretty well uh, as an opportunity cost analog. Of course, there are also people that decide to engage with premium draft because of the uh, more nuanced version of draft that that offers, uh, but they do so by purchasing discounted draft tokens from time to time. Uh, therefore, the average price on that 1,350 gems is a very solid metric there. And of course, on the opposite end of the spectrum, for people that uh, readily purchase uh, gems in order to engage in either premium or traditional drafts, a value of 1,500 gems might be totally justified. For your average free-to-play player, I think typically when they uh, receive or purchase these draft tokens, it's doing a little more than replacing a quick draft for them. So I think more often than not, the 750 gem is the more conservative and often correct answer. By far, however, the swingiest evaluation that you will see regarding the Mastery Pass is with the play sets of designated rares and the individual mythic card rewards. Uh, one of the more top-end versions of this that I have seen people use is uh, converting the uh, wild card purchase options from cash into gems, uh, but so doing means you get more than the mastery pass value back with just the mythic 
uh, ICRs. And I think this is kind of invalid because an ICR and a wild card and a specific rare are not necessarily equal in value because of course an ICR just gives you a random mythic. A mythic wild card can be redeemed for exactly the mythic that you want. So again, this is one of those areas you can do what you want. It Whatever makes sense to you is what you should be valuing at. But for me, I don't think these models really work. For me, in order to be very conservative, I go to the other end of the spectrum. Um, I value a Mythic ICR at 40 gems because that is the amount that Wizards is willing to give me in an instance where I get a fifth copy of a Mythic. Uh, similarly, I value rares at 20 gems each. So four rares a playset is 80 gems in my book. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that or see other factors, and I welcome them to do so. And just as broad is the way that you can add gems to your economy. Uh, everything from buying gem packages from the store at various levels and conversion rates, the occasional daily deal, uh, which could be 100 free gems or a 400 gem conversion from gold, depending upon how you look at it. I always recommend converting gold to gems anytime that you can. Uh, the adventurer bundle or new player bundle offers another opportunity. And frankly, I uh, recommend and support people engage with these various opportunities according to their own budget and comfort level. That having been said, the one method that I can recommend really for anybody is farming their gems. Uh, my particular preferred preferred method is doing so through uh, quick drafts that we mentioned earlier. And I know some people don't feel like they're good at drafting or maybe haven't developed a taste for it yet, but the way you get better at drafting is by drafting. And the ability to afford something like the Mastery Pass by really just averaging between two and three wins uh, is very, very approachable. Even if you aren't there yet, give it a little bit of time. It might take you more than one season to buy the Mastery Pass the first time, but you will get there. Your skill set will improve. You will probably start to enjoy drafting once you start being, well, frankly, better at it. Uh, so definitely look into various farming techniques. It's something I talk about here on the channel quite a bit. And I do firmly believe it is not only the most approachable Approachable, but overall the best way to free to play your way into the Mastery Pass. Now, once you have established your own personal values for this, you can use whatever methodology you want to simply add up the various items that you receive in the Mastery Pass. And that will allow you to get not only a total value, but also the break even point where you pass that 3,400 gem value. Um, this usually occurs somewhere in the 30s to high 30s, depending upon the total size and how much they front load the value versus how much they back load. Um, the interesting thing about the Mastery Pass and the reason I so highly recommend it is because when you add everything up, uh, even using the most conservative values that we've talked about in this video, you get a 186% return on value. And uh, that is pretty remarkable and difficult to find in the somewhat challenging arena economy. And of course, the total value only goes up from there. If you see more value in one or more of these aspects, as I said, that 186% return on investment is based on the most conservative reasonable level, uh, eliminating some of the zero cases that we mentioned. Um, that makes Mastery Pass one of the most profitable things you can do in Arena. Uh, jump in can give you a 200% uh, on average return on investment. Sometimes it's a little higher, sometimes it's a little lower, depending upon the choices that you make and how many times 
times you've done jump in. Uh, Golden Packs is also one of the really high tier return on investments. Uh, buying packs from the current set that also awards you Golden Packs gets you about 160% return on investment. And as you can see, the Mastery Pass just kind of falls right in the middle there, making it a fantastic value. And the primary reason that I say the Mastery Pass purchase every season is the best and first thing you should be doing with your gems. And before we wrap up our discussion on valuation, please be aware that when you go to unlock the Mastery Pass, it is gonna give you the 3400 gem base uh, Mastery Pass that we have talked about. It's also gonna offer you the same Mastery Pass but with 10 free levels for 5,400. Um, this is a 200 gem per level uh, normal thing that they offer. In fact, you can go in and, and skip levels at 200 gems per level. Uh, I never recommend doing that. Uh, as you can see here, there is few and far between levels that are ever worth 200 gems. Uh, if you have made a good decision about when to buy the Mastery Pass or if to buy the Mastery Pass in any particular season, uh, buying extra levels is almost never worth it because what you get for that level is frankly less than more often than not the 200 gems that you spent on it so I highly recommend skipping that option altogether frankly it's for the And before we go I want to take just a moment to thank my totally awesome patrons for supporting me and allowing me to apply my passion into a community. And of course, before we go, I've got some suggestions for your next step. I've got some suggestions for your next step. 